we meet in an hour of change and challenge, in a decade of hope and fear, in an age of both knowledge and ignorance. The greater our knowledge increases, the greater our ignorance unfolds. No man can fully grasp how far and how fast we have come. Ten, nine, eight, seven, we have a go for main engine start. I want to teach you something about something that I believe is the core of what Ignite Church is all about, okay? I want to teach you something that, that I believe the core, everything that Ignite Church is revolves around this. But it's also my biggest struggle when I first became a Christian. This was my biggest struggle when I first became a Christian. And I'm, I'm going to, I think I'm going to be preaching to some people today. And if not here, somebody will catch this online or something. But, but I want to help some people this morning. Ignite Church is a spirit-filled church. So this morning, I want to teach you and I want to pray for people to be filled with and refilled with the Holy Spirit. Now, some of you might be thinking, get the kids, honey. I'll meet you at the car. Get the kids. It's about to get weird up in here, okay? It's not going to get weird. It's not going to get strange. It's, it's going to be cool. It's going to be good. And, and I did ask for permission for this this morning because I'm a pastor, and I really I, I love people, and I, and I care about people. And um, after every service, we have, we have prayer up here. Service closes, and people come up for prayer. And it was funny. Last, last Sunday, a, a, a father was up here with his two daughters. They were 11 and 9, I believe. And they were standing right over here. And, and LaVonda... Pastor LaVonda and Pastor Toyin were praying for somebody, okay? How many of you know those two? Those two get at it, man. And you want prayer? Those are the two you see, okay? They were going for it, man. They were going. And, and listen, and it was getting loud. It was getting powerful. And it, and it was everything they did was good. It was all good. So please don't misunderstand me. But then I see these two little girls standing back there with their dad. And I'm thinking, oh, man, they're probably freaking out. They're probably, you know, so I was praying for somebody, so I finished praying for him, and I, and I went over to the dad, and I'm like, hey, come on over here, come over here, and, and I shared with him, but he was like, oh, no, 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 it's, it's okay, it's okay, we're waiting for her, <laughs> we're waiting for her, listen, sometimes the things we think are strange or we're going to freak people out, it's actually the power of God, and when people see the power of God, they're actually drawn to it, they're actually drawn to it, so even in, even in my, you know, quest to, to be pastorly and oh man what about uh, even I can overstep it sometimes so I want to I want to encourage you this morning man listen there is a power that each and every one of us each and every one of you can have God has promised it to you God has promised it to you and it's not weird it's not strange it's not odd okay and and we're going to talk about that this morning because it was my biggest struggle when I first got saved so if you got your Bibles out open them up to Ephesians chapter 5 Verse 15. We're going to have fun this morning, all right? You ready? Here we go. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. I, I got this one from the NLT version just because it says what I want a little bit better. So be careful how you live. How many of you know we should be careful how we live? Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make, I like this part, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, watch the comparison. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. All right. I want to talk this morning about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, here's what's interesting to me. Paul's writing this in Ephesians. And as he's writing this, I want you to see something. This is the second time. This is the second time that being filled with the Holy Spirit is compared to to being drunk. Did you know that? That's the second time. Twice now. Paul writes this. But in Acts chapter 2, you don't have to look back there. I'll just kind of tell you the story. In Acts chapter 2, they were waiting in the upper room for the Holy Spirit. And, and you can read this later, Acts chapter 2. But the Holy Spirit came and filled each and every one of them. And it says that they began to speak in tongues. And then they went, they, they went down and they went out into the city and, and started doing the work of, work of the Lord. But 
in Jerusalem at that time, there was people from many nations there. And if you remember the story, they heard them speaking in tongues. How many of you remember what they said? These guys are drunk. These guys are drunk. Now, I told you before that I think the Bible is funny at times. But here's what happened in Acts chapter 2. They got filled with the Holy Spirit. Many people from different nations were there, were all gathered there. These people were filled with the Holy Spirit, came down, and began to speak the wonders of God. And everybody there understood them in their own native language. About 15 to 20 different languages. These guys were filled with the Holy Spirit and came down and began to speak in, in Spanish, in German, whatever the language was there, in Japanese. And people thought they were drunk. I, I, I think I've told you this before. I think that's kind of funny. How many, of you, how many of you have ever gotten drunk and became fluent in a foreign language? Okay? Have you? I, come, come on, if that was the case... Listen, I'm not, I'm not suggesting this, okay? If that was the case, man, I'd have got drunk every, every day before Spanish class in high school, okay? It might not have helped me in algebra. I better sober up, okay? But come on. They got drunk and spoke in a foreign language? Really? Come on. That, but but, but that's, they came down and they were speaking. Now, Paul in Ephesians says, don't be drunk with wine in comparison, but instead be filled with the Holy Spirit. He's making this comparison here. And I want you to get this. In the Bible, I'm, this this would be a great teaching for another time. But in the Bible, there's actually three baptisms. How many of you knew that? Write this note down, 1 John chapter 5, if you want to check this out. There's actually three baptisms. The first baptism, baptism is into the body of Christ. When you accepted Jesus, you were baptized into the body of Christ. You became a believer. You became a Christian. You weren't baptized in a denomination. You weren't, oh, well, what are you, Baptist on this and that? No, you were baptized. You were a Christian. You were baptized into the body of Christ. There was a second baptism, and it was baptism in water. We're going to be doing that probably in August. We're going to have a water baptism. Water baptism is symbolic of you going under the water and dying to your old life and coming back up to new life. That's what water baptism is. But, but here's the reality in water baptism. When you gave your life to Jesus, you really already did that. But water baptism is still important, but it's an outward sign of what happened inside. So water baptism is, is really important, and we'll be doing that. But here's the third baptism. And a lot, it gets overlooked an awful lot. But the third baptism is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Watch this. Matthew chapter 3, Mark chapter 1, Luke chapter 3, John chapter 1. And almost all of Paul's writings talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That is how important it is. John the Baptist came. You guys all know who John the Baptist John the Baptist came along and he said, there was one coming who is greater than me. That would be Jesus. And he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. A lot of people, myself included, get confused and frustrated with this one how many of you you ever got frustrated with this one what is this whole speaking in tongues all of this let me give you one more scripture acts 19 verse 2 it says this it says and this was paul and he asked them or this might have been peter did you did you receive the holy spirit so he came across a bunch of believers they were already saved and he asked them did you guys receive the holy spirit when you believed and they answered they were like no we have never even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? They're like, well, John's baptism, they replied. And Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. And he told the people to believe in the one coming after him that is in Jesus. In hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now watch this. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. And they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There was about 12 men in all. So these guys all got baptized in the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. Now, here's my question for you this morning. When you gave your life to Jesus, when you gave your life to Jesus, I'm assuming all of you are saved this morning. When you gave your life to Jesus, were you water baptized at that moment? I mean, did you get wet? Did you, come on. What were they, could, could you imagine salvation if that was part of it this morning? You know, we'd have an altar call. Anybody want to give their life to Jesus? And you'd come up and I'd say, hey, repeat this prayer after me. I think you did. And then we took a big bucket of water. All right, now it's official. You're done. 
right? You didn't get baptized in water when you gave your life to Jesus. So, so here's my question. Why do we think so many people think it's, it, that when you, when you accepted Jesus that you got filled with the Holy Spirit? A lot of people think that. A lot of people think, well, yeah, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I asked Jesus into, into my life. It's not that way. It's not that way. Listen, listen, just because you've asked Jesus into your life does not mean you are filled with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't happen that way any more than being water baptized did. You have to open yourself up and you have to want it. You have to desire it. And you'll see it all through scriptures in the book of Acts. But you have to want it. They were all together in an upper room. They were already saved. But then they, and they were waiting. The Bible says that they were waiting for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They were waiting. They were waiting for it. Then the Holy Spirit came, and they were all filled, and they immediately went to work. Here's what I want you to get this morning. They were waiting, but you don't have to. You don't have to. You and I don't have to. Man, we don't. Listen, you received Jesus by faith. You received Jesus by faith. You received the filling of the Holy Spirit by faith. It is that simple. I'm going to make it really easy this morning, okay? The baptism in the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit is, is, can be, can be, oh, how can I say it? Some people have a, it can be difficult to explain. It can be difficult to explain. Even the Holy Spirit himself, listen, uh, I'm going to knock it all out in this morning, but if I wanted to do a series on the Holy Spirit, I could start next week, go verse by verse, and listen, some of you could go off to college and come back, and I'd still be teaching on the Holy Spirit, okay? If I went verse by verse, Holy Spirit is mentioned in Genesis chapter 1. He's there right from the beginning. So if I did that, it would be, it would be hard. To, it would take a long time. So this morning, I'm going to make it really, really simple, okay? I'm going to make it very simple. You ready for it to be simple? I told you you'd see something in church this morning that you probably never see in church. Ah. How many of you know what this is? Don't raise your hand. Uh, it is sealed, okay? <laughs> it's still <laughs> sealed, okay? In case you can't read from back there, this is a bottle of vodka, okay? And I will be watching this the whole service, okay? <laughs> How many of you ever seen a bottle of vodka brought into a church? Not very often, right? <laughs> never, never. Hey, and and let, me, let me just explain something before I jump into this, okay? This is not my struggle, okay? It's really not. Now, listen, if you struggle with alcohol, you can still be saved. You can still be filled with the Holy Spirit even. Listen, people struggle with anger. People struggle with unforgiveness. People struggle with all kinds of things. But what I want to teach you about this morning is about being filled with the Holy Spirit gives you the ability and the strength to overcome those struggles. Not just the struggle with alcohol, but any struggle. But I can do this this morning because there is really no temptation for me in this, okay? And, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about drinking. It's not that I've never drank before, but this is not my struggle. This is not my struggle. So, so I'm okay with it, but, but I got to share this with you. So, so I knew what I was going to teach, so I had to, I had to buy a bottle of vodka. So I went to Ralph's right around the corner, and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm thinking, man, I know 10 people from church <laughs> are probably going to see me buying a bottle of vodka, you know, and, and so it's like, you know, I kind of went in real stealth, real quiet, and it was right over by all the rock stars and everything, so I was like, a nah, nah, nah. couple people in the aisle, they left the aisle, and I'm like, okay, good grief, I didn't know there was that many brands of vodka, okay, man, and listen, real quick, if you struggle with vodka, and you struggle with tithing, you shouldn't, okay, man, this stuff, this stuff can be, this is the cheap stuff, okay? It can get expensive. It, so, so I'm looking it over real quick, and I'm trying to be fast. I'm like, where's the cheap stuff, the cheap stuff, bottom shelf? Grabbed it, went to, the, went to the cashier, okay? And I should have just, the guy probably sees how many people a day? 300 people, right? I should have just gone through like it was no big deal, right? But I'm thinking, what if he comes to church next week? And he's like, I don't remember you. And he probably wouldn't have remembered me anyway if I'd have just kept my mouth shut, right? But I'm thinking he probably, I remember you. You were the guy buying the, the, the rock stars and the vodka, right? So I'm like, so I'm like hey, um, can I return this? 
and he looks at me kind of funny. I'm like, well, it's really, it's just for an illustration at church. I'm a pastor around the corner, and <laughs> I know, but it's like, what do you do at that point, right? I'm like, I'm a pastor around the corner. I'm using this for an illustration, and I think he's probably thinking, sure you are. And he's like, yeah, I've heard all kinds of stories, mister, and I'm like, no, seriously. And he's like, well, yeah, you can return it if, as long as you don't break the seal. You can return it. I'm like, okay, good, good. You know, and I was about to invite him to church because if, if he didn't believe me, I'm like, really, if you don't believe me, you just come to church. Check it out. You might get something out of this. So I bought, I, I bought it, got through the line, <laughs> put it in the brown paper bag, and the whole, the whole shot, okay? But I, I, I still hit it on my way out, okay, because I'm like, I know I'm, I didn't run into any of you. But now I'm standing in front of all of you with a bottle of vodka, okay? Now, here's, here's my point in bringing this, okay? And, and this is my water. This is water. Okay? <laughs> Somebody can test it later if they want. Okay? There's some obvious things about this. Okay? How many of you, and you have to Google this, or this would be a great question in your groups. How many of you know that if you went to one of those um, liquor barns, um, big warehouse, Bevco, Bev something, um, I, you're thinking you know the name, you just don't really want to say it. No, I, I really don't. Okay? But if you, if you notice on the outside of them, they say what? They say beer, wine, and what? Spirits. And spirits. And spirits. There's a spirit in here. <laughs> There's a spirit in here, okay? And, and, and I was going to Google it and find out why they call it spirits. I don't know if some of you know. You can tell me afterwards, okay? But, but here's why I believe. Now, here's why I brought this this morning. Here's what I want to. Here's why I believe there is a comparison comparison that, that Paul makes a comparison between being drunk with this spirit, okay, being drunk with this spirit versus being filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul's writing and he says, instead of being filled with this, he's like, I want you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I think there's a comparison, and I think there's a comparison that most of you this morning were going to understand. Most of you will understand why Paul is writing this and why Paul is saying that. How many of you, you've ever been drunk before? I was actually going to say don't raise your hand, but too late. Listen, all of you that raised your hand, at least you guys are honest, okay? And that's all I'm going to say, okay? Just kidding. Now, sit on your hands for a moment, okay? How many of you do not raise your hand, have ever been so drunk that you don't remember what happened the next day? <laughs> and you pray that there are no pictures, right? Or somebody told you, man, I can't believe you said Blah, 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 blah. I can't believe you did. Blah, 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 blah. And you're like, I did? Are you kidding me? Nobody in this room this morning, nobody could drink this whole bottle and stay the same person. Nobody in this room, I guarantee you, nobody could drink this bottle and stay the same person. You will change. Against your will, you will change. Against your best efforts, you will change. Against your best intentions, you will change. Nobody here. Nobody could do that. So, so here's some things. I want to show you three things real quick. Three things that usually are true about somebody who gets drunk with this spirit. Okay? And now here's the first one. I'll give you all three, and then I'll talk about them, and then we'll move quickly, okay? First one, drink this spirit. How many of you know it can make you bolder? Well, we'll talk about it in a minute. It can make you bolder. How many of you know it changes the way you walk? <laughs> Come on. How many of you know it changes the way you talk? Right? Listen to me for a minute. Man, have you, again, please, just, if, you, if you're tempted to raise your hands, just keep, sit on your hands if you have to, okay? And I'm going to be transparent and honest with you this morning, but how many of you know that, man, how many of you have ever seen the most timid person filled with this spirit, and they become the boldest, craziest person you know? I, I, there's another, how many of you know the other nickname for this? Or at least what we used to call it in high school, okay? Liquid courage. Liquid courage, okay? Man, I'm telling you, I had a friend, and the minute he got drunk, he, he wanted to take on everybody. He, and he was, the funny part is he is a little guy. 
I was constantly dragging him away from fights. And luckily, it was always, our, our friends were around, and they're like, just, you know, he's like, I'm going to knock your kneecaps off. He's just a little guy. But he thought he was the baddest guy in the room. He thought he was the toughest guy. But when he, when he wasn't under the influence of this spirit, oh, he was quiet and shy. He knew he'd get beat up. But the minute, the minute he got under this spirit, oh, he was like ready to take on the world. He, and, he, and he thought he would win. We constantly were having to step in and keep him out of trouble. How many of you know that when you're under the influence of this spirit, you will do, no testimonies, some crazy things. Come on. Some things you would never do otherwise. Okay? And I'm just going to go on record that says, been there and done that. Okay? And you'd like the next, I did what? <laughs> Are you kidding? I jumped off what? I did that. Uh, you will get so bold. You will do things you'd never do. How many of you know that if you get under the influence of this spirit, it'll change the way you walk? Come on. It'll change the way you walk. You ever seen somebody drunk try to walk? Come on. We've all, in fact, that's usually the first test, right, that a police officer puts somebody through. Make them walk a straight line. I remember this is totally side struck, not even in my notes, but I remember uh, uh, an officer said he, he had pulled somebody over for drunk driving, and he told the guy, walk over to the curb and touch your nose. And so the guy went over to the curb, and he put his nose <laughs> on the curb, okay? Officer said, get in the back, get in the back of the car, took him away. How many of you know it'll change the way you walk? You've seen somebody that's drunk. Last one, it'll change the way you talk. It'll change the way you talk. In two ways. In two ways. How many of you know that, that, man, the quietest, shyest person, when this spirit gets in them, can sometimes be the biggest chatty Cathy and just never. How many of you know somebody like that? You can raise your hand on that one because I'm sure it's not you or the person sitting next to you, right? Man, they just, they, they're quiet and shy, but they, they get drunk and they don't shut up. They just start talking and talking and talking, and you're like, would you please shut up? And they just go on. Now, here's the second thing when somebody gets under this spirit. When they do talk, yeah, come on. How many of you know you can't even, it's like, what? You're like, what? What do you even say? And then I got my bike, and, and then dad came home, and we were late, and, and then all of a sudden we're at a picnic, and, and you're like, what are you even talking about? They make no sense at all, right? Somebody, when they're filled with this spirit, it changes the way they walk, it changes the way they talk, and it changes their behavior, all right? That's what happens when you're filled with this. Amazing that he'd use that as a comparison with being filled with the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, guess what? It changes the way you behave. It changes the way you walk. And it changes the way you talk. Did you know that? Listen, I'll use a quick illustration because he's sitting up here in the front row, Pastor VJ. Doesn't Pastor VJ look like a quiet, shy guy? How many of you know VJ is filled with the Holy Spirit, right? How many of you know he is not a quiet, shy guy? This guy is out on the streets. Everywhere I go, when I go to a meeting at another church, and, and they're like, they're, they're like they, everybody knows him. He is out on the street. He will tell anything that moves about Jesus, okay? He's not, he's not shy. There is a boldness in Pastor VJ because he is filled with the Holy Spirit. That same boldness that people get being filled with this spirit, he has it because he is filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter, you all know the story of Peter. When Peter, when Jesus was about to be crucified, Peter is standing afar off, and it says a middle schooler, a middle school girl said, you were with Jesus. And Peter's like, no, I wasn't. She asked him three different times, and all three times he denies it. In fact, the Bible tells us the last time he cursed at her. He's scared. Uh, he's just, for lack of a better word, a big chicken. He wouldn't even stand up for Jesus. And you would think, oh, man, Jesus is crucified and gone. There is no hope for this guy. But you know what happened to Peter? He got filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. No longer was he a chicken. He had incredible boldness. He walked in incredible boldness, would say things, do things. He had incredible. It, it, it was a totally different guy. You know why? Because he was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. So it changes. It changes the way you behave. 
It changes the way you behave. Listen, it makes, it makes the smallest believer. I don't know what I could call you. <laughs> it makes the smallest believer huge. It makes the smallest believer believe that they can beat a monster like cancer. When you're filled with this, there is nothing that is too big for you. It makes the most insignificant, smallest believer think, man, I could take that on. I've got power over that cancer. Listen, it makes, listen, I, 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 this is what we believe for our family, but it makes somebody believe, listen, cancer doesn't run in my family. It's going to run from my family. That's what being filled with the Holy Spirit does from you. That generational curse, whatever it might be, it stops right here. It stops right here, and a generation of blessing and blessing comes from this point on because I've been filled with the Holy Spirit, and now I have the power and the boldness to overcome that. It's going to change the way I behave. Those things stop right here. Being filled with the Holy Spirit will give you a boldness that you can never have otherwise. Never. The word says that, let me give you this real quick. I think I got time. I'm going to skip some of this, but the word filled, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the word filled actually has three different meanings, okay? The first meaning is to be fulfilled. The second one is to be completely filled. Now, here's the third one. I really like this one. To be filled with the Holy Spirit, the third word filled means to come to an end. To come to an end. Some of you are like, huh? To come to an end. When you get filled with the, not that, sorry. When you get filled, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you come to an end. An end of what? The end of yourself. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you, you come to an end of yourself. You come to an end of how you want to handle life. You get to the end of how I'm going to do this. And you begin to think, God, how do you want to? You, get to, you come to the end of how you begin to talk about certain things, talk about situations in your life. You get to the end and you're like, no, 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 I'm not going to talk that way about that. Man, I got the Holy Spirit living. You, you come to the end of yourself and, and you allow him to do it for you. That's the difference. That's, you behave You behave different. Being filled with the Holy Spirit changes the way you walk. It'll change the way you walk. Man, where you used to, I don't know about some of you, but where you used to just be random and all over the place. Listen, you get filled with the Holy Spirit, and that narrow path becomes more attractive and easier to walk. It's clear. Everything, you, you walk differently. Here's the last one. Being filled with the Holy Spirit changes the way you talk. Now, this is the one I'm going to camp out on for the next 15, 16 minutes, okay? It changes the way you talk. Two things about that. Second one's the one I really want to talk about, but you don't have to turn to this verse. Luke 12, 12 says it this way. It says, the Holy Spirit, it is the Holy Spirit who will teach us and bring to remembrance the things that you need to say at the moment you need to say them. That's why you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Man, when you're talking to somebody, Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance scriptures, things that you need to share. I think anybody that's filled with the Holy Spirit could testify of that. And they could tell you a story where they were talking to somebody and, that, man, just something came to their memory. And they were like, wow, I just said that? It's like Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance and he'll teach you the things. And, and, and that, is, that is huge. That is, that is reason enough to be filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? All of us. That's for all of us, okay? But now, here's the one I really want to talk about this morning. I really want to help some people this morning, okay? I really want to help some people because I think this is probably the biggest struggle in the church today. And it's this issue of, we're going to call it a few things, speaking in tongues or praying in the spirit. Listen, that is, this is the area in my life where I got so messed up as a new believer. So messed up in the sense that I didn't, it was like, man, I don't even want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I didn't even want to be filled with the Holy Spirit at some point. It's like, man, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. It, it, it made no sense. It was like, I, don't, I got to the point where it's like, man, you just keep that. <laughs> you just keep it. I, I, it was weird. It was strange. I didn't understand it. And, and before I get too far, let me just tell you right now this morning, being filled with the Holy Spirit is so important in your life. Okay? I may joke about some things and, and laugh. It is so important. And every one of you. Every one of us can pray in the Spirit, can speak in tongues. And it is very, very important, okay? But, so I don't want you to lose that in everything I say, okay? But, but praying in the Spirit, speaking in tongues, I'll just be honest with you, it messed me up as a new believer. 
It just, it really did. It just, it, it, it messed me up. And I want to share this with you. Praying in the spirit and speaking in tongues is not, follow me on this, is not the evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not the evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's an evidence. It's an evidence, but it's not the evidence. There's lots of other gifts that God gives that are all evidences of being filled with the Holy Spirit. But speaking in tongues, praying in the Spirit is not the only evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And that was kind of put on me. Man, when I first got saved, it's like, you better speak in tongues or you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Man, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to begin to speak in tongues. And, and it was a struggle for me. And I think a lot of the reason the church believes that today is, is and you'll have to look this up later, in the book of Acts, the quickest way that they could tell that somebody had been filled with the Holy Spirit was if they spoke in tongues or if they prayed in the Spirit. That was the quickest way they could tell. Acts chapter 2, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began, began to speak in, in tongues. Later on in Acts chapter 10, Peter is at Cornelius' house and the Gentile believers, the non-Jewish believers, get filled with the Holy Spirit and start speaking in tongues. Really what was going on here, what happened was God was like, okay, listen, I'm going to pour out this same gift on the Gentiles so that the Jewish believers will see that, look, there is no partiality. Joel chapter, Joel chapter 2, verse 28, it says, God, God prophesied that I will pour out my spirit on what? All flesh. On all flesh. Those two stories, it wasn't, it wasn't that speaking in tongues was, was, was the, the, the seal all for somebody being filled with the Holy Spirit. It was just a sign to show the Jews, look, even the Gentiles can be filled with the Holy Spirit. So how do you receive the Holy Spirit? The same way you receive Jesus. By faith. By faith. That's it. The same way you receive Jesus by faith. This morning, uh, in, in a little bit, I want to pray for some people to, to, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to pray for some people to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. Some of you are like, can, that, can you really do that? Like, yeah, well, I'll explain that in just a minute. But listen, how many of you are going to pyology after, after service this morning? I am, okay? I'm not going to be here until 4 o'clock praying over you to try to get you to receive the Holy Spirit, okay? It's just not going to happen. It's not, because it, it, it doesn't have, and that's what I struggle with so much. It doesn't have to happen that way. Listen, it's not, come on, come on, you can get it, you can get it. It's almost there, it's almost there, come on, come on, do it, you can do it, you can do it. You can. It's not like that. How many of you ever been in meetings that were like that? Yeah, some, I have, man, I grew up, and that's why I struggled. I struggled so much, man, you, you can get it, you can get it. I'm not going to be here till 4 o'clock, okay? And listen, listen, I, I. I shouldn't even go there, but I will. I'm not going to help you speak in tongues either. Okay? Anybody ever been helped speaking in tongues? We grew up uh, riding dirt bikes. I love motocross, love dirt bikes. And so one guy was like, just say she rode a Honda. <laughs> just say she rode a Honda and just keep repeating it. Just keep repeating it. She wrote a Honda, she wrote a Honda, she wrote a Honda, she wrote a Honda, she wrote a Honda. You got the gift, honestly. It's like you, you, you're, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, my brain is just like, no. It, it just, another one was like, if for those motorcycles, uh, you, know, you guys know what a two-stroke motorcycle is? It's really high-pitched bike. And the one guy said, just, just, just be like on a, starting a two-stroke motorcycle. Run, da, 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 da. <laughs> Honestly, these things happen, and I'm like, and it was just messing with me. It really just messed with me, and I'm like, no, it can't be like that. Sorry, but I, that's, just, that's real life stories, okay? It's like, it can't be that way. It, it just couldn't be. I'm going to help somebody this morning, okay? Because that stuff messed with my brain, okay? But finally, listen, seriously for a minute. Finally, I was filled. But you know how I came, that word filled. I came to an end of myself. I stopped trying to figure it out. I stopped trying to say she rode a Honda. I stopped trying to do all of those things because of this. Let me tell you why. I realized I'd already received the Holy Spirit by faith. I'd already received him by faith, whether I felt something or not. I had to come to an end of myself and believe that I had received the Holy Spirit, the filling of the Holy Spirit, by faith. 
Listen, man, it was, it was a challenge. It was an ordeal. I mean, there was, I, we went to several meetings. You know, I had oil put on, how many of you have oil put on my forehead with the cross? Nothing happened. People laying hands on you to the point where you're like, you know, doing the limbo thing. And you're like, no, I'm not falling down. I, I mean, blowing, people blowing in a mic. Now, nothing wrong with any of those. I'm not saying those are wrong. I'm just saying it was like, get it. And it's like, it just, it wasn't happening. And it was hard for me because I wanted this. I thought I, I, I there, there was just a whole misunderstanding. And I'm going to help somebody this morning, I hope. One day at home, laying on the couch, praying. And I think I literally pretty much just, I don't know, I think I ran out of things to pray about. And, and this may be hard to explain to some of you that don't understand the feeling of the Holy Spirit. I just started praying in tongues. I just, it just happened. And listen, it wasn't like I couldn't stop. <laughs> I could stop. I could stop. Some of it, some of you, you, you've seen too many movies. It's not a possession, okay? It's not, man, you, some of you think you're going to go to the grocery store and you'll be checking out at the grocery store and the paper or plastic. It's not, it's, you got complete control of it. You, it's not like that. Listen, I'm sitting on the couch and I had run out of things to pray and the next thing I knew, I was praying in the spirit. Listen, I'd already received the filling of the Holy Spirit. Once I got there, though, to that place where I came to an end of me, man, everything just started flowing. Everything just started flowing. Listen, I want it to be that easy for everyone. Listen, whatever gifts God gives, and there's more than just speaking in tongues, whatever gifts God gives, let's just celebrate those gifts. Listen, this morning, I am not going to line people up in the line and go down the line, you got it, you got it, you got it. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't. Keep trying, you keep trying, keep trying. I'm not going to do that this morning. I'm not going to do that this morning. Listen, if I, if I this morning, and I was going to do this, but I didn't have $100 bills. I spent all my money on vodka, okay? <laughs> this morning, if I went out this morning and I gave Sam a $100 bill, and I gave Pastor Toy a $100 bill, and I gave LaVonda a $100 bill. And Sam says, thank you. Pastor Toyin starts crying. And in typical fast fashion, Pastor LaVonda, praise God, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, starts yelling and screaming, okay? Okay? Now follow me on this. How many received $100? All three of them. All three of them. All three of them received $100. It, it, it's, not, it's not, well, she definitely got it. Oh, she definitely got it. He definitely didn't, okay? And she's still trying, okay? It, it, it doesn't work that way. It's like, it's like, Sam, you didn't get the $100 because you didn't react the way I thought you would react. And Sam's holding the $100 bill, and he's like, really? It's like, but I'm holding it. I have it in my hand. Listen, it is the same way with the Holy Spirit. It is the same way with the Holy Spirit. You receive him by faith. However you express it, however he expresses it through you, at that moment, it does not determine whether you receive the filling of the Holy Spirit. Are you getting this this morning? It just doesn't matter. Now, this one may backfire on me this morning, okay? This may backfire, and I'm, I'm going to get there. For those of you that have been filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm going to ask you a question this morning, okay? If you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, I need you to answer this question, and I will need you to raise your hand when I ask you. But there are four possible answers. You ready for that slide? Four possible answers. Here's the answers before I ask the question, okay? Church, home. When I say home, shower counts as home. I'll explain that later, okay? Car or other. You got that? That's your four answers. Those are your only options, okay? If it's not the first three, then you have to go with the other, okay? Now, here's the question. For those of you that have been filled with the Holy Spirit, where were you filled with the Holy Spirit? How many of you, serious question, this is not kidding, were filled with the Holy Spirit at a church service? Wow, quite a few of you. You guys are really going to ruin my illustration, okay? How many of you were filled with the Holy Spirit at home? I'm going to call that a tie. 
it wasn't. And, and the reason I said shower, because I've, I've heard so many people talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit in the shower. So that counted as home. How many of you have been, ever been, were, were filled with the Holy Spirit the first time in your car? Amen. All right. Got a few of those, too. How many somewhere else? Other. Okay. Kind of proved my point, but not as good as I wanted, okay? It doesn't have to happen right here this morning at church. It can happen to you at home. It can happen to you at your, in your car. It can happen to you at work. It doesn't have to happen. Why would God, listen to me, why would God make it so difficult to receive the filling of the Holy Spirit when it's so easy to be filled with this spirit? Why would God make, listen, you can go to a bar and get filled with this spirit and all you need is an ID, right? If you're a Christian this morning, the minute you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you are now become identified as a son or daughter of the living God. Amen? And, and, and I hate to say it this way, and the bar's open, okay? The bar's open. Listen, listen. You've been identified. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to pray for some people this morning who want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, and there's something in you right now as I'm talking, you're like, yeah, that's, I get it, Troy. And you're thinking, yeah, I, I want that. And maybe you're sitting there this morning, you're thinking, that's what I'm missing. That's why I don't have the power in me to overcome this spirit, to overcome a spirit of anger. To over maybe that's why I'm not living a victorious Christian life. I think I need that. I think I need exactly what you're talking about, Troy. I need that. If that's you this morning and you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, in just a moment, I want to pray for you. But listen, I, and, and I asked him, I, don't, I didn't want him to come up here for any music. I don't want any music. The lights are going to stay the same. I'm not going to set a mood. The presence of God is already here. I don't need to set the mood. I don't need to have music and, and turn the lights down. And, and listen, at one point, I'll tell you what the Holy Spirit told me in just a moment. At one point, I was like, I'm not even going to have somebody come up here and stand behind you. Okay? But that all changed anyway because the Holy Spirit told me to do something else. So I'll explain that in just a moment. If you're here this morning and you need to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. And maybe some of you are thinking, can you do that? Can you do that? Those of you that have ever been drunk before, did you get drunk again? You got what? Refilled. Right? You got refilled, right? Listen, listen. There are times, there are things and seasons and different times in life that you're heading into a new season in life. Maybe it's a new job. Maybe it's you're just getting married. Maybe it's marriage struggles. Maybe you're going off to school. Maybe there's a situation in your life. Maybe it's sickness. Maybe it's just your kids, okay? There are times in all of our lives where we just like, man, I need to be refilled. I can tell you this much. When we started the church in January, when we took it over, I prayed. It was like, Holy Spirit, I need a fresh filling of you to do what I believe is ahead of us. I need to be refilled. I need a fresh filling of you, Holy Spirit. There are times when you're going to need a fresh filling. Listen, this morning, I want that to be available to you. And, but I want you to also get this, and then I'll, I promise I'll move on. If we only talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit for supernatural things, we're going to miss some of the most obvious things. A spirit-filled person changes the way they talk to their spouse. A spirit-filled person changes the way they talk to their kids. A spirit-filled person, because one of the gifts of the Spirit is patience, changes the way they raise their kids. A spirit-filled person changes the way they think about and handle their money. A spirit-filled person changes the way they handle coworkers. And, and those, a spirit-filled a, a, a spirit person is somebody, how can I say this? How can I say this? Who, they're just nice, okay? I mean, come on. I'd love to see some spirit-filled people who are just nice. I think the church today, you say, man, I'm a Christian or I'm spirit-filled. And people are like, they're like, oh, get away. Man, one of the things about being spirit-filled is you can, you've just become, there's peace, there's joy. Listen, this morning, now here's what the Holy Spirit told me. If you'd like to be filled with the Holy Spirit or refilled with the Holy Spirit, in just a second, here's all I want you to do. I was going to have this altar call and do all this. Thursday night, Holy Spirit told me, no. At first I was thinking, well, don't have anybody stand behind them. No. 
Holy Spirit told me to do this this, this morning. In just a moment, if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, listen. All you're going to have to do this morning is stand in just a moment right where you're at. I'm not even going to call you forward. We're not turning the lights down. Tim's not going to come up and play music yet. Nobody's going to be standing behind you. If you fall, the Holy Spirit will take care of that. I'm not worried about it. And I know that's real. I know people getting slain in the Holy Spirit. That's real. But I'm just saying this morning, this morning, some of you are going to get filled with the Holy Spirit. In fact, every single one of you that wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to get filled with the Holy Spirit. And listen, some of you, some of you might just say, you might just, after I'm done praying, you might just be like, thank you. Thank you. Some, some, some of you might cry. Some of you might start praying. Some of you might start praying in the Holy Spirit. Some of you may leave here with a gift of healing or prophecy. But listen, every single one of you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you'll just believe by faith that you've been filled, you'll begin to see a change from the inside out. Believe by faith you've been filled. And you'll be changed from the inside out. Okay, here's a moment of truth. Ready? Anybody, everybody here that would like to be filled with the Holy Spirit or refilled with the Holy Spirit, if you would just stand right where you're at this morning. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. And I am so proud of you guys. I'm ridiculously proud. Man, that's just, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Just bow your heads. Father, I thank you that you promised every one of us. You promised to send the Holy Spirit to fill us. This morning, this morning, we receive the filling of the Holy Spirit by faith. We receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now by faith. According, according to Acts chapter 10, we receive the Holy Spirit by, by faith. We thank you. We thank you right now that you have filled each and every person, that you have refilled each and every person that is standing. I thank you that you are now giving them boldness, that the Holy Spirit is going to give them boldness like they've never had before, that they're going to behave in a different way. They're going to behave in a different way, in a different spirit. They're going to, it, you're going to begin to change the way they walk. They're going to walk with purpose, direction, and, and know exactly where they're going. They're going to change the way they begin to talk. Holy Spirit, you're going to change them. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are filling each and every person that is standing up right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for filling them right now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Why don't you give yourselves a clap? Listen, listen. You, you can sit down, but listen. You've been filled with the Holy Spirit. You have been filled with the Holy Spirit. And some of you are like, well, huh? I didn't, I didn't really feel anything. Can I be honest with you? Neither did I when I first got filled. Neither did I when I first got filled. But I can tell you this morning, and I don't say this in a bragging way, but I can tell you this this morning. Look what God has done. Look what God has done to somebody who was just yielded to the Holy Spirit. God can and will change you. He has given me a boldness. I do not behave. Trust me, I do not behave the way I used to behave. I walk differently and I talk differently. Listen. You have been filled with the Holy Spirit this morning. When you leave here this morning, don't leave here thinking, well, I didn't really feel anything. It's not about how you felt. It's not about whether you felt anything or not. You have received the filling of the Holy Spirit by faith. Now grab hold of it and begin to see what He does in your life. Just let Him work in your life. Let Him work. Every one of you, every one of you, you have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now, was that weird? No. Well, not too weird, right? You're filled with the Holy Spirit. It was that easy. I hope this morning that I have helped some people because that was my biggest struggle when I first got saved. And I lived a, a, a non-victorious Christian life for years until that moment. And now, each and every one of you have the power dwelling in you to live a victorious Christian life.